Welcome to I Believe. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Roberts Lierden is here with us. Good to be back with I Believe. Yes. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. So fresh off the publishing of my this, latest book, his latest book, 89th book. Yep. Yep. And I, uh, I'm going to have, I have 80. I have two shelves for my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I send them all down and eat two shells for my I'll own. put those Bibles toward the bottom and put I'll yours up top. No, keep the Bibles. The <laughs> Mine are not Bibles. Bibles are first. <laughs> okay. But I love this book. It's so good. The Supernatural Language, Why You Should Speak in Tongues. Who is a candidate to speak in tongues? Everybody that believes in Christ. What about smokers? Yes. What about four packs a day smokers? Yes. What about... Drinkers. Yes. If they're born again. Yeah. Born again is the prayer to be spirit filled. You must be born again first and then you can receive the Holy Spirit. What is being born again? It's accepting Christ as your savior and he regenerates your dead spirit that died in the garden of, of Eden. And he makes you come alive. So that which you become was a new creation, new creation, a new person. When someone is born again, does the Holy Spirit go in their body? I don't think so. It's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, I think it goes in because you have the inner witness of the spirit. Your inner person is born again. All of a sudden, you were only a two-part person functioning. Now you're a three-part living person, spirit, soul, and body. And that life of the spirit is beautiful. How do you know? So speaking in tongues, so you think the baptism of the Holy What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It is after you've been born again that you receive the Holy Spirit as a person like you did Christ into your life. When he comes into your life, one of the things he does is he gives a language, a prayer language, or super, I call it the supernatural language. It's called speaking with tongues. It is a language of the spirit. It's a language of God. It is not earth. It has a language structure, a language sound, and it's not always understood by your natural mind because it did not come through your mind. It came through your spirit. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and you don't have to explain them, but <laughs> if, you, if you've got the... If you're brave enough to say it. <laughs> okay. Try. Okay. Uh, um, can you be born again and not speak in tongues? Yes. You can be born again and not speak okay. in tongues. Okay. Can you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Paul talks about, the Acts 2 describes, um, and not speak in tongues? I think the scripture shows that when you're spirit-filled, you will speak with tongues. So it's a separate, it can be, a separate occasion. It can be maybe at the same time, yeah, but, but it also can again, be, and then there's this cup. It's a second yeah. experience. Paul said in uh, Acts chapter 19, he was over with the young guys in Ephesus. They said, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So he, he's telling that you believed. Now there's something after you believed. See, yeah. See, 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 Dad Hagen, I, I've heard, I, I, I think he's just like the epitome of, you know, I have his shirt and I know you want it. Yes, I do. Yeah, because he collects <laughs> Pentecostal artifacts yes. and historic. So I have. I've heard Kenneth Hagen preach more than any other preacher in my life. Do you love him or what? He, he is he's the, the best, best Bible, spirit filled Bible teacher ever. Holy Ghost filled. I was listening to I the way a prophet. Here. Yeah. Oh, he was a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, anyway, so I have a shirt that has his uh, embroidery. And I'm about five pounds away from fitting back into it. <laughs> but Dad Hagen, um, uh, when I hear him teach about it, it sounds like he doesn't think the Holy Spirit enters a prayer. He thinks that when you believe you're born again, but it sounds like he doesn't think the Holy Spirit enters their body until they receive the infilling, mm. what he calls of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Is that, a, is that possible? I, I don't even want to say it because it sounds like we're cutting off a lot of people, but we're not saying you're not born again. No, being born again is accepting Christ by faith in your life and you're born again, your spirit's renewed. And then receiving who Jesus sent to take his place on the earth for all of us, the Holy Spirit. And so, I'm not sure about that answer. Are you? No, I'd have to go back and hear him talk. Uh, yeah, but he was pretty convinced, I'm pretty sure. You know, and, and of course, our apostolic friends and United Pentecostal Church friends, they would probably kind of, our, our Kojic 
some of our Kojic friends and some of our PAW friends. So you're almost, that makes you, makes what I hear that, that makes is you, the, the Holy Spirit's not working in a person's life unless they speak in tongues. That's not true. That is not true. He no. can be working your life as a, a, as a believer only. Yeah. Being born again. And then he'll work in that. Yeah. But to have that empowerment and that other side that Jesus said we are to have comes with that, what we call the baptism or the infilling. Okay. So where we're landing right here is of the born again spirit experience is when you put your faith in Jesus Christ as a son of God, that he died, he was he, ra- he rose again, and you believe him, you confess your faith, you accept him and receive his free gift of salvation. Mm. And I, I kind of believe this, I think. Then the Holy Spirit comes into your body and merges with your spirit man and you become a new creation mm. and you become a child of God you become a son of God. You become a citizen of heaven, a citizen of the kingdom of God. And then an initial, uh, then a separate experience is when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Is that possibly a good doctrine? That's, you can say it that way. Yes. Just somatics? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, but but we all land on it's a separate experience. Yes, you must be born again first. Then yeah. after that comes, because Paul asked the question, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So it kind of gives you the, how it works. Yes, yes, but first yes. things first. Okay, so what is speaking in tongues? Speaking in tongues is a supernatural language that God gives you that comes out of your mouth like English or Spanish, but it is a heavenly language. It has no earthly connection. It is a language that sounds like one, but it does not come through your head, it comes through your heart. Okay, so you've been in 150... 127. 127 nations, countries. Yeah. I've been on four continents. So I've been... Um, so when I was in uh, Kenya, back in the bush... No, that's Australia. Uh, up in the uh, small villages, um, people would walk miles to come to church. Mm. And, and they spoke Swahili. The country people spoke Swahili. Uh, a lot of the city people spoke, in the younger people spoke English and Swahili. Mm, yeah. But they spoke Swahili. They didn't know English. But when they spoke in tongues, it's just like you and I speak in tongues. Mm. I, I, everywhere I heard, everyone I heard speak in tongues. It's the same all over the world. It's the same. Yeah. So how can that not be real mm. and authentic? It's a heavenly language. Yeah. Paul said, when I speak in tongues, I speak directly to God. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of speaking in tongues is your direct communication of God and praying the perfect will of God out. Because there are times you don't know what to do or how to pray. Praying in tongues gives you the ability to know that you're confident that what you're praying is God's will and it will come to pass. Okay, you have chapter six, the benefits of praying in tongues. Um, Number one, tongues are the evidence of infilling. Explain that. That means the tongues let you know that the person has been spirit-filled and let yourself know. That's part of my tongues. That continues to tell me I'm spirit-filled. Mine is a little more appellation. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so um, <laughs> where, where do you come up with these I don't know. comments? Jim? Holy Ghost, I guess. I don't know. So, um, all right. So, so every time, I, I've seen hundreds, maybe thousands of people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. because the whole first part of my life in ministry, that was kind of the thing that followed us is people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One time, like 40 kids received the baptism wow, of the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's great. So it kind of followed us. So it's, it's a passion of mine. I dramatically received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the middle of the night when I was 12. My dad laid his hands on me mm-hmm. and prayed for me. And you were seven, I think. So it's been with us all of our lives, yeah. all of our ministries. To me, tongues is more easy to speak in than English. I, I don't pray without praying in tongues. I, every time I pray, part of my prayer is in tongues. Yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, so, tongues, so in my experience, whenever I prayed for someone to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence is speaking in tongues. Yeah. Has that and been that, your experience? And that's scriptural. That's what I've seen too. And that's what I love. How is that for. scriptural? Well, it's all through the book of Acts. You can read it. It's right there. That's what happened in Acts 2 when they received the baptism yeah. of the Acts Holy Spirit. 9, they all spoke all in yeah. tongues. Cornelius, when they received the baptism mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit, while sitting under Peter's teaching they of the word of God, they prophesied. all spoke yeah. in tongues. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's Bible. All right. Uh, benefits of praying in tongues. Tongues will make you strong. Explain well, the that. The Bible says that in Corinthians that speaking in tongues edifies yourself, which is the word edify means to make strong. 
So it is one way a Christian can become strong and not live a weak, oppressed life. So praying in tongues gives you muscles like Rambo. Can I say it like that? Like you know, Spiritual muscles. Like, yeah, spiritual muscles on the yeah. inside. Wigglesworth would say, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I'm on the outside. And he would constitute that with his praying in, in tongues. I love that. Okay, number three. Tongues will make you spiritually sensitive. Explain that. Well, when you pray in tongues, you become aware of the spiritual world, you become aware of the Holy Spirit, you start learning more about him. So the more familiar you are, the better you can cooperate. So tongues is the beginning of that and will continue in that. Okay, do you think sometimes that tongue? you may even get there, do you think that tongues kind of stirs up and activates the other gifts of the Spirit? Well, for sure. Me too. It's It's like a... Something you're starting to mix up together, it, get it, it all just going and It gets activated. the prophecy going. It gets the yeah. word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Well, it gets you out of your head and, and totally into your spirit. That's it. Because you can't flow with Don't these make things. me run around my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's out of your head and into your spirit. And then you're in the spirit world. You're, you're moving with the move of the spirit. Okay. So, yes. Okay. That's exactly right. So, that's why... And I hate, I hate to keep going back to Benny Hinn, but I just spent months with him. Good man. Go back to him. Tell us. I, I spent months with him, uh, writing his new book with him, um, The uh, Mysteries of the Anointing. So good. I love this book. Uh, and I narrated it. If you want to go to Amazon, uh, what's that Amazon company that does the near Audible yeah. or iBooks or anywhere, charisma.com. But anyway, so, um, but uh, what was I saying? I'm talking about the, out of the head into the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he, you know, we just think that Benny Hinn likes Alleluia. <laughs> he just loves that song. No, not to mock that great man of God, but but he he knows that if it's simple enough or a song that they already know, mm -hmm. that they don't have to think about the lyric or think about the melody, because if you think about it, you're in your flesh. Benny Hinn, when we were writing that book, he said, Jeff, he said, people can preach in the flesh. They can pray in the flesh. They can lead worship in the flesh. They can sing in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he was referring to the flesh, meaning your carnal thinking, your natural thinking. But when you get down to singing from your spirit, that's why he sings Alleluia a lot. That's why, that's why he will uh, sing in tongues or he will, you know, he'll, and that's why maybe you do it because we go from our, head thinking, our flesh, our carnality, down to the Holy Spirit within us. And we worship and sing from our spirit. And that's where tongues comes from. That's how it activates all those gifts, isn't yep. it? Because yep. we're not thinking yep. from the brain. Okay. Tongues is not a head thing. It's a heart thing. It's from the spirit. I love that. Tongues will build your faith. What does that mean? Well, the Bible says it stimulates faith. When you pray in tongues, you're believing. It gets stimulated. It gets stirred up. It gets activated. So it's one of the benefits that with tongues. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Jude 20. Yes. Okay. Tongues can clean up your mouth. If you pray in tongues, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna, to send this book to about four people, <laughs> four pastors. <laughs> well, I've learned that it's helped me to speak more positive than negative. It doesn't let me a cuss. Let me do all those kind of things. Though when you pray in tongues, it cleans up your natural way of it's talking. It's true. I cannot, I cannot pray in tongues and cuss at the same time. Yeah. And if you do, I'm cuss, not really a should, cusser. I'm feel, not a cusser. You should feel convicted. <laughs> so it cleans up your mouth. It helps. It really does. It does help. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, so we're just going to read through the chapter there. No, I'm, I'm being led. I'm being led by the, <laughs> spirit. Led by the spirit. Tongues bring spiritual refreshing. Wigglesworth, I'll answer that. Smith Wigglesworth asked one time, do you ever take a holiday? He goes, every 20 minutes. And the guy goes, what? I pray in tongues and that's my refreshing, that's my holiday, that's my break, that's my, my re-energizing. And so that's what I would You know that. what I find? I find that when I pray in the spirit, that when I feel overwhelmed, mm. when, when, when I'm feeling overwhelmed or heavy, sometimes we can feel heavy and we don't know why. When mm. I pastor to church, um, uh, and I'm still a pastor, you know, just because a nurse doesn't work at the hospital anymore doesn't mean she's not a nurse. Yeah. You know, so, um, but, uh, but I remember I would feel this heaviness, this weight on me. And sure enough, within a couple of days, there was, 
somebody on the praise and worship team took 10 of the people and started something over there. Or I always knew by the spirit and I, and I would get, and I would get grieving it and I would feel it was like a sinking feeling would come mm. on me. And, but I learned back then during those times that if I would just steal away, get away and I'd pray in the Holy ghost that it lifted the discouragement. Mm. It lifted the heaviness. One way to say it is it refreshes you. Yeah but it will lift your discouragement. It'll cure your depression. If you pray in the Holy Ghost enough, I believe it'll cure your depression. What do you think? I agree. Okay. It's a refreshing. You don't need a pill. You need tongues. How's that one? We have too many medications when it's praying. Oh, the can I read the scripture? Go for it. Okay. Isaiah 28, 11 through 13. For with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to his, to this people to whom he said this, is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So it brings us a rest and yes. a refreshing. Yep. Okay, tongues gives you the power to be a witness. It's a part of that in front of the Holy Spirit that empowers you. Romans. Yes. Um, Acts, Acts 2, 4, yes. plus or Paul, 2, 8, yeah. plus, it'll empower you to be a witness for Jesus yes. Christ. Yeah. Plus Acts Paul, 1, 8. Paul said tongues was a sign to the unbeliever too. What does that mean? That means a person who does not have the Holy Spirit, you can pray in tongues in front of them so they can hear and experience it that way and then invite them to get saved and spirit-filled. It is a sign to the unbeliever. So when somebody comes up to me and says, you speak in tongues, I say, yes, you want to hear it? I go straight to the point. Do you want to hear me speak in tongues? And some of them go, uh, no, and run off. Others, yeah. sure. And they'll sit there and look at you, and they'll ask questions. I've never heard anything like this in my life. Well, are you a Pentecostal? I am, but this is good. <laughs> this is good but stuff, it, it, y'all. It's, it's, a, it's a sign to the unbeliever. So that means to me that there are times that the appropriate thing to do is to demonstrate it for them who do not know or who are interested in and show them. So do you think that this idea that spirit-filled spirit churches, Siblings of God, Church of God, Pentecostal Holiness, Pentecostal churches, and, you know, charismatic churches, that we have the idea that, oh, it'll bring, it'll confuse um, the, 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 the new people coming, it'll, no. the visitors, it'll scare them away. So we don't do that in our main service. We'll do that That's off to the side. It's called a nervous pastor. A nervous pastor. So is that the wrong approach? Yes. The Holy Spirit knows who's in the room and knows what to do. If you will follow him, it'll all work out. If you try to control the traffic, that's where all the confusion and trouble comes in. Okay. Uh, speaking in the languages of the earth. Explain that. Well, sometimes with the prayer language, we'll, we have the supernatural miracle of you're speaking another language of the earth that you did not know. A message. Does that make sense? Like you're speaking yeah. Russian or you're speaking like Japanese. Yeah. Because they heard them speak in their own language. Okay. So there's a little bit of a supernatural thing with earth languages with tongues. Yeah. And so I, I assume by that comment in that book, in that scripture was as they were speaking in tongues, that they were all hearing them in all the different languages, the, the message of the Lord. Okay. You've said it twice now. Okay. You've said it twice. And so I want to throw something at you just to see what you think. Okay. okay? So you said it twice. So you said they heard them speaking in their own language. It doesn't say, now some of the translations say that they spoke in other languages, mm -hmm. but King James, New King James says they spoke in an unknown tongue and those that were gathered there heard them speak in their own language. So let me tell you what's, what happened to me one time. Okay. I was in Victoria, Texas. Angie and Dee, Dee were there that worked for me for 20 years. You yeah, know them. them. And, um, uh, and a, a woman from Daystar was there. You know, I used to have a program yeah. on Daystar. And, and it was, a, it was a Hispanic church, a Spanish church, a Mexican church. And, um, so I had to have an interpreter and the pastor was my interpreter. So I never speak in tongues in the microphone. I don't know why I, I just don't, it's not that I'm opposed to it. I just never, I rarely, rarely do, rarely do. I have, but I rarely do. But this particular day I put that microphone in, at, up to my mouth. And I spoke in tongues in a powerful, my normal tongues, those words that I normally pray in tongues, you know, part of my language, mm -hmm. I prayed in tongues and the people started, that spoke Spanish, not English, started going wacko. After the service, the pastor said, Jeff, I thought you said that you did not speak in Spanish. 
I said, I don't speak in Spanish. He said, the last 20 minutes, you preach to them everything I've been preaching to them for the last two months. Wow. So, but I, I know how I was speaking. I was speaking in my normal prayer language, my tongues, my mm -hmm. heavenly language I was praying. It wasn't different. It wasn't Spanish, but they heard it in Spanish. Yeah. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So however God wants to do it, he can do it, it however be. he wants to do it. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Your prayer language should grow. Let's just say that our, as our last thing. What does that mean? Well, that's like you, when you learned English or Spanish or Russian, whatever language you speak, you went from mama, dada, cookie, ma. You went from basic little things to a proper no. <laughs> yeah, to the terrible two yeah. that says no. Yeah. And you grew in language. And as you got through high school, college, your your language hopefully increased your with verbiage, your maturity with maturity. And the same thing is true with speaking in tongues. You start out with baby small utterances, and it grows into fluent, long, uh, and important types of utterances. Well, let's get you saved, and then let's get you filled with the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to lead them I'll in, in, in uh, salvation. In, in case, share this on your page, so some, and then tag them or put them in a comment so they can see it, because then we're going to lead them to the Lord. Right now, where you are, say, Dear Lord. Dear Lord. I believe, I believe Jesus, Jesus, you are the Son of God. You're the Son of God. You died for me. You died for you me. Rose again. You rose again. You are alive. You are alive. I believe it. I believe it. I receive it. I receive it. Fill my body. Fill my body. With your spirit. With your and spirit. And use me. And use me. For your purpose. For your purpose. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Amen. can you pray them into the Holy Spirit? Father, we thank you that these have just been saved that you will now fill them with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come upon them and infill them and let the language of heaven begin to come up inside of their soul, inside of their spirit and speak out. We let there be freedom in this language, we pray. Yes, in God. Jesus in name. Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this program today. You know, we have bungalow worship our beautiful gathering right here at the bungalow of worshipers, a band, singers. You turn bones into armies. We have The Vow, our dynamic ministry to 50 and over right here in Orlando. <laughs> Tabitha's ministry, our victorious ministry for widows. Then we have Jeff Ferguson Ministries, which is our daily I Believe program every day at 1 p.m. on YouTube or Facebook, different social media platforms. Thank you for supporting this ministry. This is a healing place. This is a healing